Hey, what's up, guys? It's your man, 4 am again, back with a follow-up guide for War Tales. Part 2 of my guide in which I talk about pretty much everything you need to know. All the essential path upgrades, knowledge points, which you want to pick up as quick as possible to make survival of the new highest difficulty extreme a lot easier, a lot more manageable. I'm also going to give you plenty of tips and tricks for resting, so you can get the most out of your crew. Be ready for any encounter and maximize your spoils of war. So without further ado, let's get right to it. As you can see the title, this is part two of the survival guides for extreme difficulty. On the previous part, we talked a lot about my crew composition, recommended crew size, best professions to pick up early, etc. So if you missed it, be sure to check it out in the top right of the screen. Today, we're going to continue where we left off at the Brotherhood's training ground. Talk about a couple skills which you want to pick up and give to all your characters to make survival a lot easier. So this one comes with manuals, the taunt, wrath, aim, run and first aid. It's going to be a lot easier to get your hands on these books for a nicer price once you unlock bandit layers, basically. This is unlocked once you've reached level 4 in Crime of Chaos, access to the black market and its agents, so be sure to focus on that. But yeah, I have most of these books on every single one of my characters. I mean, Ragnar right here. Wrath, First Aid, Run and Taunt. Of course, it doesn't need the aim skill. On Ari, I even have the Wrath skill right here. If she's engaged in combat, she can basically do this to perform an arrow shot instead of that stupid punch. Also the first aid and aim. But yeah, it's very important that you focus on first aid. Get this on every single one of your characters once you reach the 15 willpower. While I don't recommend you to focus on upgrading this skill when leveling up, I think I only went with 14 base value. There you go. I also have my compendium upgrade right here. If you go all the way to the bottom, this is where you have deep knowledge fortitude. It will cost three knowledge points, but trust me, once you get plus one willpower on every single one of your characters it's gonna become a lot easier to reach that 15 so your characters can finally get down and won't instantly die rationing is awesome to reduce the food consumption of your crew trust me over a longer time of playing this is gonna make a massive difference while you also want to go with fragility to reduce the wages paid to your companions also pick up the offer hunters increase the number of missions displayed on the bounty list uh, restoration, one of the most important ones to pick up as well. Bountiful bounties, another bonus mission. Fast training and career plans are combined. Very nice to have. And yeah, if you can't find a nice companion, I think the human resources are pretty sweet as well. Well, if we quickly go to our paths, I constantly have to upgrade these things right here. But uh, you're probably wondering what kind of path upgrades should you go for first? Because, man, there are so many different ones to choose from. On Power and Glory, improved restoration. Five additional armor points is awesome to have. Trust me, guys, repairs are going to become extremely painful. The more beefy your characters become, the more you work towards that end game. Same counts for the strict rationing, so you can further decrease the food consumption, while the rest right here is more late game stuff. Champion craft spin could be nice, but only after your characters are level 5 or higher for those armor layers. I mean, I don't even use all of those just yet. Still focusing on finding the perfect gear. Same counts for the art of the forge. I think starting at level 8, this is going to be nice. But bravest of the braves, extra valor points is really nice to make combat a little bit easier. All the rest right here is not that important while on trade and craftsmanship. Long distance running, oh yes, movement speed on roads increased by 20%. Essential one to have, focus on this as quick as possible. Cooperative, reduce the wages paid to your companions even further. If you have your happiness on 15, you will always generate bonus influence, which basically makes negotiators super interesting. The possibility to negotiate missions in the list of bounties will allow you to make a lot more money some contracts are still from the early game. Well, look at this, 300 gold. Right here, we've got 300. And this one, 537. So if you can negotiate a perfect rate, man, these missions are going to be awesome to finish. With reputable mercenaries, you can get another mission on your list of bounties. So very nice to have. 
Man, almost everything in the traits and craftsmanship is nice to have. While I don't really think these four are interesting to go for. On the Crime and Chaos tab, I absolutely love Ruffians. I mean, in the early game, I practically go full wanted level. And if you have only one star, this already increases your movement speed in forest by 20%. So it's going to be easier to escape from the guard, easier to escape from animals, pretty much anything if you are hidden in the woods. Nimble fingers also decrease your suspicion during theft, can be a nice bonus in addition to that. Same counts for highwaymen to increase your influence and experience after resolving that combat, but focus on this later game, it's not that important early. Instead, you want to focus on assassins in the making first, so you can also have access to assassination missions, another one added to the list for extra bounties. Same with the unprincipled, while negotiates can also help you big time if you're dealing with the guards. If you especially are on a limited or a Iron Man safe, I think being able to escape from those super brutal encounters is essential. Then, last but not least, we have the Mysteries and Wisdom. Wow, it seems like this one is the easiest to upgrade from all if we look at the levels, level 7, 8, 8, and 10. But yeah, this one heavily focuses on exploration. Again, that is why I think you should just quickly visit every single biome. I already made a guide on how you can bypass border payments, which you can find at the top right of the screen. So it's going to be super easy to get from A to B. I mean, I have some pretty tactical piton placements. Let me uh, quickly show you that. So um, normally a border pass is about 200 gold. Let's uh, just run towards this area. So we have uh, some bandits right here. Let's just quickly run in the woods. So see, that's already what gives us a plus 20% movement speed. Very nice. But yeah, if we use these pitons right here, we can just go to the other side of the border crossing. Amazing to use for quick travel, bypassing all the payments, but in general, make travel so much easier in the world. Talking about world travel, Endurance Run is going to be nice to increase your run duration by 20%. Another one very important for exploration in tombs or, I don't know, during combat is Enlightened Opinions. Torches last longer and light up a larger area in battle, so it's going to be easier to spot your surroundings during a snowstorm or when it's pitch black outside or inside. If we quickly check out the camp, blueprints from the Tracker's Guild are very important to get your hands on as well. For example, the meat drying rack, which I think we picked up um, at the Tracker's camp in the southwest of Artes. For those, you also want to have the Tracker's language. Make it so that your characters will get injured less frequently with just a scratch, so you're gonna need less medicine, which is pretty expensive or hard to get early game, gonna help out big time. Exterminators could be nice if you perch red nests all the time. And of course, if you have your lectern up and running, started raiding tombs of the ancients, both the archivist and archeologist is gonna be nice. But yeah, now we are standing on this mountain, pretty close to the prisoners. Let's uh, just use this piton right here to uh, get a little bit down closer to the guard. But yeah, this is why you want to have pitons all over the place. So now we can just run to the other side right here. And this is a place where we can safely rest. After resting, you also want to assign one of your lieutenants to the banner. Man, the banner is so powerful, guys. If you are about to engage combat with a pretty interesting pack of enemies who have a chance to drop gear which you're looking for, pick up respect for the enemy. That is why you want to always have a lot of influence for spare. So you can just go on this one, increase your loot after battle, and possibly also go with swift progress so you can increase your combat XP by 30%. If you're afraid of the guards, or well, if they're about to get to you, Go with the faking innocence. You can just run past them. This can help in so many situations because then it will look like you are not wanted. Sometimes it feels like you're getting pushed in a corner. It's practically impossible to escape from the guard. With these guys, even on Iron Man difficulty, you can prevent failure in those situations at all times. Anyways, before you rest, make sure you have everyone assigned to the right stations. Always the tinker at your tinker table for those free to materials. Strategy table, very important. I go with the flanking, increase 
the debuff applied to surrounded enemies for more damage deployment so you will get extra deployment slots which makes it easier for you to organize your crew right before the battle begins and with regroup you will get even more closer slots to each other so it's going to be a lot easier to cast the galvanized troops so you can make that build up for valor a little bit easier same counts by the way for the tactical order which is even more difficult to land on all your characters because the radius is smaller but yeah two unhappiness right here sometimes i put them in the if I'm low on Valor. If I click on the fire, look at this, with all these characters. We have six characters, a prisoner and two horses. I only have to put three dishes in there to feed their mouths. And I'm making a lot of different types of food, so it's going to be easier to get the exact value. Always use your wood to make some extra coal, generate more happiness and rest at the fire. See, since we are already on maximum happiness, we will get bonus Valor points. We will get some coal, some snacks, some raw materials and some salt because of the salt scoop. But if you add at least one person to the campfire, which I totally forget about, man, you can generate so much more value. All right, so there you have it. All the tips and tricks I can give you, all the tools for the job to make extreme difficulty a lot less extreme, let's say. If you found this video helpful, be sure to leave a like. You have no idea how much this helps out the channel. If you have more questions or suggestions for future videos, please do leave them in the comments down below. I am always happy to help and we can continue the discussion on our Discord with thousands of members. You're very welcome right there. Right now though, it is 4 a.m. out. I want to wish you an awesome day. Stay tuned for more War Tales. I'll catch you guys in a next video or live stream. Peace.